viewers welcome to this video in this video we will be looking at the november 2020 science paper 2 question b4 question b4 reads table 4.1 below shows the elements in a period of a periodic table table 4.1 shows the elements in a period of a periodic table so we've got uh, these elements so we've got lithium we've got beridium we've got boron we've got carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon so these elements belong to the same period of the periodic table so b4a b4a reads to which period of the periodic table do these elements belong to which period of the periodic table do these elements belong all right so first and foremost we need to understand what is used to determine the period an element belongs to in a periodic table so the period in which an element is in the periodic table represents the number of shells an element has so elements with the same number of shells will belong to the same period so uh, a quick illustration will be we can take two elements from uh, we can take two elements from the elements shown above so the elements that we can pick on uh let's say uh, let's pick on carbon okay and let's pick on let's say lithium or, or fluorine we can pick fluorine we can pick lithium whichever we can even pick oxygen so if we went with let's say uh carbon let's start with carbon or lithium so for lithium lithium li okay the atomic number is three the atomic number is three the mass number is seven so if we were to write the electronic configuration lithium will have two comma one so it means that lithium has got two electrons in the first shell and one electron in the second shell so if we picked on carbon so carbon will be c okay uh, carbon has got uh, atomic number six mass number 12 okay this means that carbon will have two electrons in the first shell then four electrons in the second shell so we've got something in common here between lithium and carbon they all have two shells so the first shell has got two for for both of them while the second shell carbon has four electrons and lithium has one so to further just cement this because uh, people may think it is just coincidence let's uh we can also pick on uh let's say oxygen or fluorine so if it is fluorine fluorine f okay has got uh, atomic number nine so the electronic configuration will be two comma seven again we only have two shells so it means that uh all the elements all the elements in this period have got it two shells so it means that they belong to period two of the periodic table all right so all of them belong to period two of the periodic table so all these elements belong to period two of the periodic table all right so having done that we can now answer to which period of the periodic table do these elements belong so they belong to period d two so they belong to period d period d two so that is it 
uh, the answer to that question. They belong to period two. Now we go to B. What happens to the number of shells across the period shown above? What happens to the number of shells across the period shown above? So what has happened? Lithium has got two shells. Carbon has two shells. Oxygen has two shells. Fluorine has two shells. Neon will also have two shells. So the number of shells remain the same or the number of shell is constant so as long as you use a word that means that the number of shells do not change it will score so the number of shells remain the same All right, we now go to C. We now go to C. C, answer the following questions using the elements shown in the table B1.4. Each element can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Answer the following questions using only the elements shown in, in the table B4.1. Each element can be used once, more than once, or not at all. So C1, which two elements would form an ionic compound? Which two elements would form an ionic compound? So which... Uh, which two elements so they only need two elements okay from the table above so which two elements so from the table above so we go back to the table uh -huh. then we now need to analyze what is first question is what is an ionic okay? compound what is an ionic compound so an ionic compound is a compound formed when a metal uh, combines with the non-metal it is a bond between a metal and a non-metal so here there are two elements that we can positively identify as being purely metals and that is uh, lithium and beryllium. So these two are metals, okay? These two are metals. And we also have uh, elements that can be classified as purely non-metals. So starting from carbon up to uh, fluorine there, they can form bonds, neon, is a noble gas therefore it does not form bonds and we remove it from whatever we are thinking why have i left out boron boron is called a metalloid and a metalloid will behave at times it will behave as a metal and at times it will behave as a non-metal when you look at the behavior of boron is that it will sometimes behave as a metal and sometimes as a non-metal. However, for you to convince uh, the examiners that you really know what you're doing, you need to look at uh, elements that will form uh, compounds that are common. So the best elements to go for are, for non-metals, go for oxygen and fluorine go for oxygen and fluorine since we only have two metals so choose between uh, lithium you can either go for lithium and oxygen which is lithium oxide or lithium and fluorine which will be lithium fluoride or beryllium and oxygen which will be beryllium oxide or beryllium and fluorine which will be beryllium fluoride these 
we will actually easily score so we said uh so what we are going to have here is uh the following so you can either go for lithium and oxygen or lithium and fluorine or beryllium and oxygen or or beryllium and fluorine so all these are possible answers you only need to choose a com one of these combination either you write lithium and oxygen or lithium and fluorine or beryllium and oxygen or beryllium and fluorine so you just choose one all right so we now proceed which element has a valency of three which element has a valency of three so first things first what is valency uh valency in most cases people would define it as the combining power of an element quite all right it is a combining power but what does it really mean when we when we use the word valency we are just saying how many electrons does this element need to gain lose or share in order for it to have a stable outermost electronic configuration so what we are just saying is that how many electrons does an element need to lose for it to have a stable electronic configuration how many electrons does it need to gain in order for it to have a stable electronic configuration or how many does it need to share in order for it to have a stable electronic configuration so what is a stable electronic configuration for those elements with uh the the last shell being the first shell they'll need two electrons so like for hydrogen hydrogen has one electron has one electron so it needs to gain another one so that it has a fully filled up outermost elect uh, 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 outermost shell for elements with two, they need eight. For two shells, they need eight. So let's see. Uh, let's get back to our to our table. So our table here. Uh, for our table here, we actually allow me to to remove all that. All right. So when we look at our table, lithium lithium uh we said that in the last shell since lithium has got proton number three it has one electron so one electron meaning lithium and lithium being a metal will need to lose that one electron beryllium will need to lose the two electron but boron will need to actually lose three electrons okay so boron here has got a, a valency of three it needs to lose three electrons okay boron needs to lose three electrons so boron has got a valency of three carbon on the other hand has four electrons in its outermost shell so carbon uh, is very reluctant in losing them it would rather gain because the outermost shell is half filled for nitrogen nitrogen who also need to gain because it has five electrons in its outermost shell it needs to gain three so nitrogen and boron have all need three electrons so boron will need to lose three nitrogen will need to gain three so any one of these is uh, when you write them will give you that will be a correct answer so either nitrogen or boron so which which element so they are just asking for one element so you can choose between nitrogen and boron so we'll go for nitrogen as at now so we'll say 
nitrogen nitrogen so nitrogen or boron so you choose any one you want because there is only a slot for one they've said which element not which elements okay has a valency of three then we go to c3 which element has allotropes which element has allotropes so according to our syllabus we only learn about one single element with uh, which exhibits allotropy now what is allotropy or what are allotropes allotropes are different forms of the same elements in the same physical state the, the different forms of the same elements in the same physical state so uh, what do i mean different forms it means that these things should look different but the state of matter should be the same i'll give an example diamond diamond uh, looks uh, more of glass okay but it's solid while graphite is dark it's black dark okay but it is still solid so the only element of the elements that we've been given here that exhibits allotropy is carbon however uh, that is that is according to our syllabus okay so carbon exhibits allotropy and carbon has got two allotropes and that is diamond and graphite so they didn't ask about what are the allotropes of carbon or what uh, are the allotropes exhibited by this element so we are just going to say carbon 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 has allotropes so this brings us to the end of this video thank you very much for watching don't give don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.